Hi everyone. Let me know who's on. Um, you know, I remember back when I was in my nine to five job and building my first ever online coaching business. And I was, my job was in digital advertising at the time. And that was what I was building my business in. And I remember every week, having the same conversation it felt like with my friends and family where I would, you know, call them up on the phone and be like, all right, you know, this is it, you know, this is the week or this is the month. I'm, I'm going to turn to my notice. You just watch, wait and see. And everyone would just nod and be like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You know, you, you've said that so many times. And so, you know, it, and the reason I would do that is because I just felt so much impatience and, and wanting to, get out of my job. I mean, that's, you know, that's, I mean, that's normal. That was the whole goal. And the thing is also because all those online courses, all those uh, gurus out there, they tell you, you know, well, the point is to build a business that allows you to turn in your notice. That's awesome and great. And I talk about that too, but they make having a job be like such a, such a disadvantage. It's such a bad thing. Right. And I don't know how this happened, but one day, I remember I was watching Mulan, the, the Disney show, and there's this scene in particular. I remember thinking it was really cool when I was young, but it really had new meaning for me when I was sitting there and thinking, oh my gosh, I just wish I could turn in my notice and work on my business full time because being in my job is really handicapping my business growth, right? Let me know if you've thought that before, for sure. Um, Hey, Julie and Steve and Lonnie. And I was watching that scene. I don't, if you guys have seen Mulan, you probably remember it, where, you know, she's training. She's, she's at the camp pretending to be a guy and she's training. And the commander basically says to her, hey, I don't think you're cut out for this. You know, he's singing. You're not cut out for this. You know, leave. And then it's the middle of the night. And she, they had this training task that they had to do where they were given, I think this like rope or something with two heavy weights at the end. And they had to climb up a pole, a really tall wooden pole with those weights. That was one of their training activities. Nobody had been able to do it. And she hadn't been able to do it up until that point either. But she was like, you know what? I cannot go home. I need to figure this out. And she looks at the, the ropes and this, the weights in this moment. She, what she does is she, instead of, of the reason everyone had failed, it's because they were trying to like use the weights. They were letting the weights drag them down when they were trying to climb up. But instead she takes them and she uses them to climb up the pole. Right. And that was that huge turning point for her where, because she took what everyone was seeing as a disadvantage, like the heavier weights, making the climb harder. Um, she turned it around and she used it to climb up the pole. And I remember having this big aha and I call it the Mulan breakthrough now, but the big aha moment was really, okay, every disadvantage that you think you have can actually be turned into an advantage. And so I remember, you know, this was again, back when I was in my job, I remember thinking, all right, how can I turn this into an advantage? How can my, cause I, I need a job, right? I, I, I have to have a job until I build a business that replaces my income. So I have to make the best of it. Um, how can I turn it into an advantage? And so that was my Mulan breakthrough moment. And so what I did was I thought, all right, how can I really shift my mindset? So my being in a job is like the weights that Mulan used to pull herself up instead of dragging her down. And that's when everything shifted for me because I realized actually when you are in a job and building your business, you have advantages that most entrepreneurs don't. You know, the, the whole, the thing that's so romanticized for entrepreneurs is to quit your job, burn the bridges, come up with this big sexy business and then go all in. You know, I'm really risk averse. I also, you know, have bills to pay. So I didn't really feel great doing that. And so I thought, all right, you know, what, what can I do to make my job actually leverage it so that I can build my business faster? And so I did, there are three things that really, really make a difference, right? And so I really want to, if you are kind of trying to manage both your business and your job and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is too hard. How am I ever going to do it? Do I, am I going to have to quit my job and, and do this full time and just hope things work out? 
today's today's video is really really for you because um, I wish someone would have shared this with me when I was building my business okay so the three steps to really leverage your job are number one to really leverage the existing assets that you have that you've built up right it's the same thing with anything you uh, anytime you spend time energy money whatever on something you've built an asset so obviously you should use it and what I mean by that is if in your job you've got really great existing skills, if you've got a network, if you've got credentials, you've got qualifications from all of that, well, guess what? That is a huge advantage for you to leverage in your business, right? This um, recently I was looking over content for a bunch of my students and over and over I have a lot of students who are really successful in their jobs, right? Really successful lawyers or really successful corporate trainers or have a background of psychology and having done their um, whatever they do for decades. And I wasn't seeing any of that in their content. And it was because, you know, we like we don't no one wants to feel like they're bragging or showing off. And it might feel like you have this mindset because I'm starting a new business. I don't know that it can necessarily translate. But I'll tell you, it absolutely does. Because even though your business is new, what you're doing is not new to you. Right. So it's really about first leveraging your credentials all the time, all the blood, sweat and tears you spent building your area of expertise and just showcasing that as simple as just scribing and listing out. It's not bragging. People want to know how you're awesome before they're ready to hire you. And then the other piece is the network. I mean, I have quite a few students who basically have gotten their first paying clients by just letting their network know, hey, I'm starting a new business. And you have all of these relationships that you've spent the last few years building and really they, they know you, they trust you, of course, they're going to want to um, help you and refer people to you or potentially even hire you, right? So those are things that it's so easy for us to overlook because you might think, oh, I don't want to bother people or I don't want to brag. But honestly, it's not. It's not bothering. It's not bragging. People probably want to hire you if they know you and how good you are at what you do. People probably want to help you because they like you just like you want to help your friends, right? And it's important to let people know know how you're good at what you do because that's what they're looking for in someone they want to hire. So those are natural assets that you can use right away. So that's step number one. Don't overlook that. It might seem simple, but I can't tell you. I was looking over, um, you know, quite a few submissions recently and every single person had, the, had one or two of those things that they could really have added to really help them immediately stand out. This is stuff they, that you, we all have already earned from our careers. Um, so step number two, and this one is huge, right, is to leverage your income from your nine to five. Nobody talks about this. Everyone's like, oh, bootstrap it or um, I don't know, eat ramen and hope it works out. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be lean when you're building your business. You absolutely should. But when you've got income coming in, you have to remember, once you leave your job, your business has to both pay for itself uh, because it's a business and it has to pay your bills. But when you're starting out, if you have a job, then all that income that your business is making in the beginning can be invested back into it to help it grow even faster, right? So you tell me what you would rather do. Would you rather, you know, work a job so that you pay the bills and you can focus, your business can just focus on growing and grow it really quickly so that you, yeah, you have to do both for a few months or for a little while, but ultimately you build your business so much faster so that by the time you leave your job, your business is making a great income or leave your job, try to have your business both pay for everything in your life itself and your bills and, you know, worry and struggle with that and have it build more slowly, which one, and, you know, take a few more years, which one would you rather have? I mean, it's really up to you, but I know personally, I definitely prefer the first one. I was willing to work a little bit harder for a short amount of time and have that income. Not only that, but also when you have a little extra income, you can hire out the things you don't wanna do. If you don't like doing, um, for example, tech stuff, you don't wanna set up your website, you don't wanna to have to deal with email responders, guess what? When you're making a job, you have a little bit of income, and again, this is about being lean. I'm not saying go out there and hire everybody under the sun immediately. You can outsource that, right? So it gives you freedom and opportunities on top of being able to grow your business faster that you just don't have if your business is the sole source of income in your life. 
right? And so that's step number two, which is so, so huge. And then the final step, which it really took me a, a moment to wrap my head around, is that, you know, um, I used to think, yeah, if I left my job, I would have more freedom to work full time in my business. But what I really realized is that, you know, at the end of the day, when you, especially when you're building an online coaching business, there aren't that many things you need to be doing. And I mean, you tell me, have you ever had a weekend where you were just sitting there and you were at, on Friday, you were thinking, oh man, I have this whole weekend, I'm going to do so much stuff. Like, you know, recently we had to do a huge cleaning of um, our place and we're like, oh yeah, this weekend, this is going to be it. And then we just got really lazy, had the whole weekend and, and didn't do anything, right? Whereas um, we are, some of our friends bought some of our stuff and it was like, all right, they're coming, they're coming to pick this up and we need to have this cleaned up by that because that's the hard deadline. And that really forced us to get our stuff together. It's the same thing when you're in a job. You have limited time when you have a family of other stuff. You have limited time and that forces you to actually focus more on your business if you allow yourself to think about it that way as, remember, the Mulan breakthrough, using it as an advantage versus as a disadvantage. And so in line with that, the only question when you're, especially when you're building your business in the beginning, that you need to be asking yourself to decide if you're going to do anything in your business is, is this going to help me get clients? Because that's really the only thing you should be focusing on when you're managing both your business and your nine to five. Right. So, I mean, that was what I started doing immediately. And that just completely shifted all the activities I was working on and really lightened my workload a lot. It was like, is working on this pop up for four hours until 3 a.m. in the morning really going to help you get more clients when you're not even driving traffic to your website? Or is, you know, spending all this time setting up this really complicated email responder going to really help you get clients when no one's even signing up for your emails? Right. These things really, really put it into perspective. And so when you think about that, it shifts into, okay, these are the only activities I need to be doing. You know, asking maybe for referrals, like we just talked about earlier, or maybe posting your content wherever your clients can see it, following up with potential clients, answering potential client questions and inquiries. Those are the only things you need to be doing. And so having your nine to five actually forces you to have that discipline to work on your business and do the things that really get results and really matter instead of having all this free time where you might be tempted to watch Netflix. I know that happens to me. So, um, so basically, those are the things I wanted to share with you today. The Mulan breakthrough, the three steps, and the one question to ask yourself. That really, I've seen it over and over, creates such a big difference in seeing your nine to five as an advantage that you can use. Another tool under your belt to build your business faster, more effectively, more efficiently. And to be honest, when it comes to building your business and getting clients, when you have that additional source of income, you never fall into a place of desperation of, oh my gosh, I need to get this client to pay for this you know, bill, to pay my bills. And when you do that, you're able to come from a place of strength, to enjoy your business, to only work with the clients that you really want, and to build your business as the business that you want from the beginning, instead of having to do the work or work with the clients that you didn't really build your business to work with because they're not great clients, right? So I really want you to shift that today. Use that, that job, that nine to five, all those things we just talked about as an advantage to help you climb that pole, right? Like that Mulan analogy versus as weights that are dragging you down. That's going to help you build your business so much faster in a way that honestly also feels better to you while letting you have more fun and honestly get your business to the point where you're able to turn in your notice a lot sooner. So that's what I have for you guys today. I hope you found this really helpful. Really shift that mindset and um, really allow yourself to enjoy the journey and get there faster. Uh, if you want more awesome tips and support, come and join me in my free Facebook group, Entrepreneurial Leaders. The link is a in the post or, or that way um, in the in the post link come and join me I'd love to chat with you some more and uh, hope you have a great rest of the day wherever you are bye everyone